So let's take a look at 12. So 12 is one of those factoring ones. It helps to look at 12 like an algebra problem. If this was x squared minus 2x plus 1, how could we solve this? Factoring by grouping. We only have three terms, so do we need a factor by grouping? Oh, wait, no. Never mind. Do, do we, we just factor it? Just factor it. Do we have two factors of 1 that add to negative 2? Would it be negative 2 and plus 1? What's negative 2 times positive 1? Negative 2? Yeah, so that wouldn't work. Because they have to multiply it at 1 and add to negative 2. So negative 1 and negative 1. So here we would put x minus 1, bless you, times x minus 1. But we changed out sine to be x, so we just have to change it back. So we have sine theta minus 1 times sine theta minus 1. Yeah, so we could change this as sine theta minus 1 squared. Again, questions like these are going to be multiple choice, so you just kind of have to see how the answer choice is. But yeah, these are the same thing. Let's look at 14. All right, so this is going to be like one of the free response questions. We need to get our left side to look like the right side. Which side do we want to start with? The left. Yep, let's start with the left. So we have sine theta times sine theta, which would be sine squared theta. Sine times cosine would be a positive sine theta cosine theta. Negative cosine times sine would be a negative sine theta cosine theta. And negative cosine times positive cosine would be a negative cosine squared theta. What can we do next? You can just cross out the two middle terms. Perfect. The two middle ones cancel. So then we're left with sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. What can we do next? Sine squared theta is just 1 minus cosine squared theta. Awesome. We want, looking at what we need, our answer is in terms of cosine. So we want to change the sine to look like a cosine. So our identity for sine squared is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. This doesn't look like this, so we can't just change it out for 1, but we can manipulate this to be sine squared theta equals. So then we can just replace whatever that is in for sine squared. So we just subtract the cosine squared theta on both sides, and we get 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we're just going to take this and plug it in for sine. So we have 1 minus cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. What can we do next? Now you just subtract the two cosines. Yep. What's negative cosine squared minus cosine squared? Negative 2 cosine squared? Negative 2 cosine squared. So do we get 1 minus negative 2 cosine squared? Yep. 1 minus 2 cosine squared. If you ever get confused on like how to FOIL, like when you're multiplying sine squared times the sine squared, or sine times sine, 
Think about it as like x times x. x times x, you guys know, is x squared. When you have negative x minus x, this is negative 2x. So if it ever, if it helps, if you ever get stuck, just think about it in terms of x. Because all of this is is like simplifying algebra stuff once you get past part of the trig. Let's look at 16. That is on the next page. All right, let's take a look at number one. So these, all we need is our identities for them. Simplify as much as you can. So tangent we know is sine over cosine times cosine. The cosines on top, since we're multiplying, cancel. So we're left with sine theta. So these are good practice to just work on your algebra skills in simplifying. So here, we know we can't just cancel out the cosine squared and the cosine squared, but one minus cosine squared looks like one of our identities. We have sine squared minus co plus cosine squared is equal to one. So to make it look like one minus cosine squared, we need to subtract cosine squared on both sides. So we have sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. So we can just change this one minus cosine squared, put in a sine squared. So we have sine squared over cosine squared. We know sine over cosine is tangent. So that means sine squared over cosine squared would just be tangent squared. Number three, we have cosine theta Cosecant theta is 1 over sine. So this, when we multiply, becomes cosine theta over sine theta. Cosine over sine is cotangent. Number four. We have sine times secant over tangent. So we can change everything to be in terms of sine and cosine. So this would be sine theta times one over cosine theta over tangent. I'm not gonna change the bottom yet because I kind of see what's going on on the top. So I have sine on top over cosine over tangent sine over cosine is tangent, so I have tangent theta over tangent theta. Now tangent over tangent cancels and becomes one. Number five, cosecant is one over sine theta. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Since we have a fraction divided by a fraction, keep, change, flip. Sine on the top cancels out with the sine on the bottom. Since we're multiplying, this becomes 1 over cosine. And 1 over cosine is secant. Alright, so we have a 1 minus cosine squared. This is one of our identities. We have sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. We can make it look like a 1 minus cosine by subtracting our cosine squared. So sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So we're just going to take this sine squared and plug it in. So sine squared over tangent squared. Now we can still simplify this more. Let's change our tangent to be in terms of sine and cosine. So this would be sine squared over cosine squared. So we keep, change flip, keep the top, change to cosine squared over sine squared. The sine on the top cancels out with the sine on the bottom. 
So this would be cosine squared theta. Number seven. So let's change everything in terms of sine and cosine. So we have cosine theta times secant theta is one over cosine theta. Instead of changing the bottom just yet, I am going to simplify the top because I see something going on. So I have cosine theta on top and cosine on the bottom. Since I'm multiplying, they cancel. So I'm left with one over tangent theta, one over tangent theta changes to cotangent theta. Number eight, sine over cosecant. So I'm going to change everything to terms of sine and cosine. Cosecant changes to 1 over sine. Keep the top, change to multiplication, flip the bottom. Multiply across, so sine times sine is sine squared over 1. Number 9. So I'm going to break this up. Since I have two terms on the top, I can't just cancel because I'm not multiplying the tops. So I'm going to break it up into two terms. So I have tangent theta over tangent theta plus cotangent theta over tangent theta. Tangent theta over tangent is 1. I'm going to change cotangent to be 1 over tangent, so I can combine these together. And then I'm going to change tangent to be tangent over 1. Keep the top, change the bottom to 1 over tangent. And now I can just multiply these together, so I have 1 over tangent squared. 1 over tangent squared changes back to cotangent squared. And then this is one of our identities. 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. Okay, number 10. This one's a good one to know how to do. I can't just break it up into two because I have one minus sine theta on the bottom. I could multiply by the conjugate, but then that would just give me a whole bunch of sines and cosines on the top, and it would make things a little bit longer for us. I want to change cosine to look like a sine and maybe see what I can do from there. So our trig identity is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. I want to change cosine squared to be something in terms of sine, so I'm going to leave cosine squared where it's at and subtract sine squared to move it to the other side. So I have 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared. So I'm going to take this, plug it in for cosine squared. 1 minus sine squared theta over 1 minus sine theta. Now on the top, I have the difference of two squares. 1 is a perfect square. Sine squared is a perfect square. So I can break this up into 1 minus sine. 1 plus sine over 1 minus sine. Now multiplying these, so when you're multiplying, you can just cancel out the like terms. So I have 1 minus sine squared on the top and 1 minus sine squared, on, 1 minus sine on the top, 1 minus sine on the bottom. Cancel them. So I'm left with 1 plus sine theta. That's as simplified as we can go. So again, this is a good one to know how to do, because we kind of made it longer here to then simplify it further. Alright, 11. Secant squared minus 1 over secant squared. So just remember, when you are multiplying, you can cancel out something on the top or something on the bottom. If you're adding, they don't cancel. Alright, we did 14 in class, so that should be the first one on the video. All right, so let's split it down the middle. Which side do we want to work with first? Left. 
Sure, let's work with the left. On this one, both sides seem about the same in difficulty. We may end up having to work with both of them, but always just stick with one, do what you can, and then go to the other one. So what should we do first on the left side? Change tan to sine over cosine. Perfect. So since it's tan squared, it would be sine squared over cosine squared. And that's times sine squared theta. What can we do next? Combine. Combine them. So we're multiplying. So what would we get on the top? So we have, let's think about it as x squared times x squared over y squared. What's x squared times x squared for multiplying? That's to the x to the fourth. So this would be sine to the fourth theta over cosine squared. All right, so this seems pretty solid here. Let's maybe try to work on the right side, unless you did another step on the left that you wanna do. Or you think we should move on to the right side, see if we can get the right side to look like this. All right, let's move on to the right. What should we do first on the right side? What do we do first on the left side? Change tan to sine squared over cosine squared. Awesome. Change tan to sine squared over cosine squared. We got our answer here in terms of sine and cosine. So on the right side, we want to change everything to be in terms of sine and cosine. And also looking at what we have here, we have one term together. So on the right side, it kind of gives us an idea. We want to combine these two terms to be one term. So how can we combine these two together? If we have a fraction and a whole number, what do we need in order to put them together? Common denominator. Common denominator. So this sine squared theta is sine squared theta over 1. And what is our common denominator here? Cosine squared? Cosine squared. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by cosine squared. So our first term stays the same. This is sine squared theta over cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta times cosine squared theta over cosine squared. Now that our denominators are the same, we can just add our numerators. So this would be sine squared theta minus sine squared theta cosine squared theta over cosine squared. What can we do next? Can we simplify our fraction a little bit? Can you, uh... We can't subtract them because they're not like terms. Think about it. We have x squared minus x squared times y squared. These are not like oh, terms. Can you cross out the cosines then? Can't cross out the cosines because this term doesn't have a cosine. We could only cross out the cosines if it was just multiplication on the top. Do we have anything in common at the top that we can take out? Well, the sine squared theta is at the top and at the bottom. Can we do something there? 
we, like I said, we can't cross them out because this one doesn't have a cosine squared. So we can't just cross these out because it's not multiplication. It's not all multiplication at the top. Like it has to be multiplication in order to cross them out. If we have x times y over y, these would cancel. But if we had x plus y over y, you can't cancel these. Do we have any terms in common that we can take out on the top? In terms of x and y, if we have x squared minus x squared times y squared over y squared, do we have any greatest common factors on the top here that we could take out? Can you take out a sine theta yeah. and a cosine theta? We can just take out a sine squared theta because both of these have a sine squared theta in common. So sine squared theta. What are we left with when we take out a sine squared theta on the top? One minus one. Oh, or not. Never mind. One minus cosine squared theta. <laughs> over cosine squared. Does 1 minus cosine squared theta look like anything we know? Our trig identity is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. If we move the cosine over, this would be sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So we can take this sine squared and plug it in for 1 minus cosine squared. So this would be sine squared theta times sine squared theta over cosine squared. What can we do next? Perfect, just multiply them and we get sine to the fourth power theta over cosine squared. So these are the same. This one was probably the trickiest one, in my opinion, on the whole review, just because you have to work on both sides. So this one was a lot of work. And then, like, my final answer was 1 over cosine squared theta is equal to 1 over cosine squared theta. Would that be mine? Remember, there's more than one way, more than one correct way to do these. One way somebody does it might be different than the way somebody else does it. But for this, since sine squared and sine squared are both on the top, you can't cross them out. No, I didn't cross them out. I like cross multiplied. But okay, so we're multiplying and this is sine squared over cosine squared times sine. See, you can only cross multiply if there was like an equal sign. Like if you had one half times three, is he, this doesn't make sense, but okay. Like this, we could cross multiply across the equal sign. But if we're just multiplying fractions, one half times three fourths, we multiply straight across. Definitely there's more than one way, more than one correct way to do these. So if you didn't do it exactly how I did it, but you still got the right, in, like you still were able to equal them out, that works. But just make sure that the math you're doing is right. Okay, I'm going to do 18 next. Any other questions on 16? All right, let's look at 18. Which side do we want to work with first? The left. The left looks a little bit harder. All right, what should we do first on the left? We 
can FOIL it. So we have sine times tan, so this would give us sine theta tangent theta. Then we do the outside, so sine times cotangent would be sine theta cotangent theta. Then we have cosine times tangent, so this would be cosine theta times tangent theta. And lastly, we have cosine times cotangent. So cosine theta, cotangent theta. All right, what can we do next? Our goal is to get this down into two terms here. So maybe we want to try to change everything in terms of sine and cosine and see what we can cancel out and combine. So we have sine theta. In terms of sine and cosine, what is tangent? Sine over cosine plus sine times cotangent. So in terms of sine and cosine, what's cotangent? Cosine over sine. And then cosine theta times tangent, which is sine over cosine. And then cosine theta times cotangent, which is cosine over sine. All right, let's see if we can get anything to cancel out. So what is sine theta times sine over cosine? What do we have on the top? Squared over cosine. Sine, sine squared over cosine. What happens to our next term? We have sine theta times cosine over sine. Is it just cosine? Just cosine. We have a sine on top and a sine on the bottom, and we're multiplying, so they cancel. So this would be just cosine theta. And then on the next one. Now it's just going to be sine. Perfect, just sine, because the cosines cancel. And then on the last one, we have two cosines on top. So cosine squared theta over sine theta. What can we do next? Would you try to find a common denominator? Yep, we can find a common denominator. Looking back at what our goal is, we have this secant theta plus cosecant theta. We have two terms that we want to get our four terms to look like. So maybe we can group this into one group here and one group here and find a common denominator in both of these sets. So let's just work with the first group and find a common denominator, combine them, and then we'll work with the second group, find a common denominator, and combine them. Because we want to only have two terms. So we're not trying to combine all four into one. So let's see if we can get it to work that way. So we have sine squared over cosine plus cosine. What would our common denominator be between these two? What, what do we have to multiply for our common denominator? Cosine on the one on the left and then sine on the one on the right. Perfect. Uh, we're just looking at like this one here. Our denominators are cosine and 1, so we would just have to multiply the right one by cosine over cosine. Does that make sense? Let's 
So now on the top, we get sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta over cosine. Does sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta look like anything? An identity that equals one. An identity that equals one. So we can change this to one over cosine. So we see some simplifying going on. We know we're on the right track. So we can simplify this even more. What's one over cosine? Secant. Secant. All right, now let's do the same thing in our second parentheses over here. What do we have to multiply to our left term to have it have a common denominator? Sine. Sine. So we multiply the top by sine and the bottom by sine. So we get sine squared plus cosine squared over sine. What's sine squared plus cosine squared? One. One. So one over sine theta. What's one over sine theta? Cosecant. Cosecant. What were we trying to get? Secant theta plus cosecant theta. So we got it. So let's look at 15. We want to work with the left side because it looks more complicated. 1 plus cotangent squared is one of our identities, which it is cosecant. So I have the sine squared theta times cosecant squared theta. I can change cosecant to look like a sine. So I have sine squared theta times 1 over sine squared theta. By the sign on the top and the sign on the bottom, and I'm multiplying, they cancel. So 1 is equal to 1. I love when they're easy. We did 16 in class, so last one, let's look at 17. Let's change everything to sine and cosines first. Looking at this, we have a 1. We can kind of conclude that this is going to be some type of identity on the left side because usually if we have something squared or something squared or something minus something squared we get one so let's see if we can get these to be something squared so secant theta over cosine my goal is to bring the cosine to the top or I could do ch change everything to cosines either way works so we can change secant to cosine. So 1 over cosine theta over cosine theta over 1. Keep the top, change multiplication, flip to the bottom. So multiply straight across. So this is 1 over cosine squared. And then minus. Let's change everything. We could change everything to sine and cosine, or we can see that tangent is actually 1 over cotangent, or we can change cotangent to 1 over tangent. So we have tangent theta over 1 over tangent theta. Keep the top, change to multiplication, flip, multiply straight across, we have tangent squared over 1. So let's change cosine squared, this fraction here, to not a fraction. So we can bring it to the top and make it secant. Minus tangent squared. And we know that this is one of our identities. It is, we have 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. So we want to change this to look like secant squared minus tangent squared. So we can just subtract tangent squared on both sides. So 1 is equal to secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta. 
So we can just take one and plug it in for secant squared minus tangent squared. So one is equal to one. All right, so it's if in the review, just a reminder, everybody at home, you want to print out your identities to have them with you tomorrow. So print out all of those identities from 5.1 notes. You want to have them in front of you for tomorrow.